right so we'll start hands in dhyan mudra right hand in the left palm we'll chant one om and then say the prayer recha pura the position we'll start om sahana bhavatu sahana bhunaktu sahaviryam karva bahai tejasvi navadi tamastu ma vidvisha bahai om shanti shanti Shanti. Rub the palms together, spread the energy of the face, open the eyes. Now I'm just going to read the translation of that prayer again today. It's for those people who haven't quite got it. And it is, O Lord, protect us, student and teacher both. O Lord, nurture us both. May we become strong together. May what we study be invigorating. May we never bear hatred for each other. Om, may there be peace. Right, so now we'll start with our breathing exercises. Pranakarshan Kriya, slow deep breathing, five repetition, counts of 10 and 20. Re Chak Purak Recha Purak Recha Time to rock. Breathe normally. Now do the Brahma Mudras, neck exercises. First three with breath control. Breathe in, make the movement, come back and breathe out. And the next two with regular breathing. Start with the first one, moving the head to the left and right. Re Chak Purak. Hold your breath, head to the left. One, two, three, four, five. Stretch the neck as much as you can. Come back, one, two, three, four, five, re chak, pura, hold the breath to the right, one, two, three, four, five, stretch, come back, one, two, three, four, five, re chak, pura, to the left, 
one, two, three, four, five, stretch. Come back, one, two, three, four, five, reach up. Pull up. To the right, one, two, three, four, five, stretch. Come back, one, two, three, four, five, reach up. Second variation, dropping your head towards the left and the right shoulder, stretching the opposite arm out, and using a hand to pull the head down further. Reach up, pull up. Drop the head to the left shoulder, stretch the right arm out, left hand to pull the head down further. Come back, reach up. Pura. Head to the right shoulder, stretch the left arm out, right hand to pull the head down. Come back, reach up. Pura. Head to the left shoulder, right arm stretched out, left hand pulling the head down. Come back, reach up, pull up. Head to the right shoulder, left arm stretched out, right hand pulling the head down further. Come back, reach up. Now the third variation, dropping the head back, reach up. Pura. Drop the head back. Face the front. Reach up. Pura. Drop the head back. Face the front, reach up. Fourth variation, normal breathing. Jerking the head to the left and the right, so just loosen the neck. And let's start. Left, center, right, center. Left, center, right, center. Left, center, right, center. Now the 360 degree rotation of the head, so drop the chin to the chest. And let's start moving to the left, back, right, front, left, back, right, front, left, back, right, front. Now stop, change direction, go to the right, back, left, front, right, Back, left, front, right, back, left, front. Stop, lift the head up, rub the palms together, spread the energy of the face and open the eyes. Now do the shoulder exercises, the skan, the kriya. So hands on your thighs and we'll start the movement up and back. One, two, three, four, Five. Change direction. One, two, three, four, five. Fingers of both hands on the respective shoulders, elbows touching in the front. Touch your wrists behind your head as you go up and start up the back. One, two, three, four, five. Change direction. One, two, Three, four, five. Now we'll do the Naman Mudras, bending postures. Naman Mudra number one, hands in Namaste position, elbows close to the body, back upright, shoulders thrown back, opening up the chest. 
For this Naman Mudra, we bow to the Supreme Divinity in the form of Earth. Om Prithviye Namaha Re Chak Pura Kansova Re Chak Bend forward from the hip joint, arms fully outstretched as you go down. Keep your arms outstretched for a little while. Now retract your hands, bring them close to the head, relax the body and breathe normally. Four things on Rechak, you breathe out, straighten out the arms, bring the head back in line with the spine and apply the mool band or the root lock. Rechak. Purak, come up. Recha. Second variation, arms behind your back. Right hand in the left palm, thumbs interlock. Elbows are not bent, shoulders thrown back. For this Naman Mudra, we bow to the Supreme Divinity in the form of water. Om Jalai Namaha Re Chak Pura Re Chak Keep your arms outstretched for a little while. Now slide your hands up the back, drop the elbows, Drop the head, relax the body and breathe normally. Again the four things on Re Chak. Re Chak. Pura. Re Chak. Third variation, hands at the lowest part of the abdomen, fingers interlocked, elbows close to the body, shoulders thrown back, opening up the chest. For this Naman Mudra, we bow to the Supreme Divinity in the form of fire. Om Jalai Namaha, Namaha. sorry, Om Agnaye Namaha, Re Chak Pura. Re Chak. Head in line with the spine as you go down. Drop your elbows, relax the body and breathe as normally as you can. Once again, four things on Re Chak. Re Chak. Pura. Recha. Fourth variation, arms folded behind the back, each hand holding the opposite elbow. For this Naman Mudra, we bow to the Supreme Divinity in the form of air. Om Vayave Namaha Recha Pura Re Chak. Bend forward, head in line with the spine as you go down. And drop your head, relax the body and breathe normally. This time three things on Re Chak because we did not move our arms after coming down. Re Chak. Pura Recha Fifth variation, arms folded in the front, each hand holding the opposite elbow. For this Naman Mudra, 
we bow to the Supreme Divinity in the form of space. Om Akashai Namaha Rechak Purak Anskova Rechak Bend forward, arms overhead as you go down. Relax the body, breathe normally. Once again, three things on Ray Chak. Ray Chak. Purak. Ray Chak. Rub the palms together, spread the energy of the face, open the eyes, stretch your legs out. Loosen the joints of the legs and come and sit in a comfortable cross-legged position. And we'll start with Kapal Bhati. We'll do 54 with each individual nostril, 108 with both nostrils. After individual nostrils, we'll hold for a count of 10. And after both nostrils, we'll hold for a count of 20 and then do Amar Kuti. Start with the right nostril. Re Chak. Half Purak. Close the left nostril and start. Hand down and hold. Purak. Recha. Purak. Recha. Now we'll do it with the left nostril. Re Chak. Half Purak. Close the right nostril and start. Eight counts with both nostrils. Hold for a count of 20 with the locks applied. If you can't apply all the locks, at least put your chin to the chest. <coughs> Ray Chuck. Half Pura. And start.
where the locks and hole Why is that? Pura can hold. Galti hai. Re jump. Pura. Re jump. Now we'll do partial kapalbati or side kapalbati. Do it for a count of 30 on each side and we'll hold, sorry, we do a count of 20 on each side and we'll hold for a count of 10, first in the exhale condition and then after that taking a breath in and holding at the inhale condition for 10 counts. Re chak, half purak, turn to the left and start. Hold your breath. Pull up. Apply the locks and hold your breath. Release the locks and reach up. Pull up. Face the front. Reach up. Pull up. Reach up. Now do it on the right side. Re chak. Half pura. Twist to the right. And start. Hold. Pura. Apply the locks and hold your breath. Release the locks and reach up. Pura. Face the front. Reach up. Pura. Recha. Now we'll do Ujjayi. All three variations, two repetitions each. Starting with Saral Ujjayi. Recha. Pura Recha Pura Recha Matyo J, hands below the waist, shoulders and elbows thrown back, opening up the chest and we're stretching our lungs horizontally here. Re Chak, Pura, Re Chak. Pura. Re Now 
Urdhva Ujjayi, arms folded in the front, each hand holding the opposite elbow. And here we'll be stretching our lungs vertically. Re Chak Purak Re Chak Switch arms Purak Re Chak Now we'll do Basra, do 40 counts of Basra with both nostrils and hold for a count of 20. Basra, just as a reminder, Ujjayi type breathing, friction in the throat, but in Kapalbhati rhythm. Re Chak, half Pura, and stop. <coughs> the locks and hold. Ujjay Pura Recha Silent Pura Recha Now we'll do Nath Sadhana Practice of chanting Om So we'll chant three Oms after Ujjayi breath each time Then we'll do a quiet meditation Where you can focus on all the good things that have happened to you in your life And express gratitude towards the Supreme Being and to others who have been helpful to you. Then after that we chant two Hastakarna Bad Oms. Re Chak Pura Listen to the lingering sound of the Om in your mind and observe your breathing. But now for the next a few deep breaths, think about gratitude to thank people who have been helpful to you and to the Supreme Being.
Now with love in our hearts and enthusiasm in our voices, let us chant two Hastakarna Bad Ohms to invoke the divinity within us. Cup your palms, place them over your ears, fingers behind the head, thumbs on either side of the voice box. Re Chak Purak together, spread the energy of the face and open the eyes. Now we'll do some pranayam. Yesterday we did Basrika pranayam types 1 and 2. Today we'll do Basrika pranayam type 3. So just to a reminder, first we'll do pranayam Basrika, sorry, Basrika Kapalbhati for a count of 21. This time, unlike in types 1 and 2, we do the Kapalbhati as well with one nostril. So first we'll do 21 counts of Kapalbhati with the right nostril, hold for a count of 21, then Purak for a count of 5 with the right nostril, hold in Antar Kumbhak, applying the locks for a count of 20, then Rechak with the left nostril for a count of 10, and hold in Baya Kumbhak for a count of 10. And then we'll do it the other way, where we'll start the Kapalbhati with the left nostril, Purak with the left, and Rechak with the right. Okay. Right, so we'll start. Rechak, half Purak, close the left nostril, and start. Purak right, Antakumba with locks, Rage up left. both nostrils, Recha, Pura, Recha, now I'll do the other way, starting the Kapalbhati with the left nostril, Pura with left, and then Recha with right. Recha, half Pura, close the right nostril, and start. left, Antakumma with locks, Re 
Ray Chuck Wright. Hold. Purak. Recha. Purak. Recha. Now we'll do Plavini. One round of Plavini. It's somewhat similar. So we start off with arms folded here. We do 21 counts of Kapalbhati. Then we hold for a count of 21. Then we do Purak for a count of 5. And as you do the Purak, your arms go up. Then you hold your arms up there and apply Antar Kumbak for a count of 20. Then you do a Re Chak for a count of 10. You hold and buy a Kumbak for a count of 10. So same counts as we did in Basrika. And then you do a pura, and then your arms come down right at the end. As part of the recovery breaths, the pura can reach up, your arms come down for the reach up. Okay, so as I call it out, you should be able to follow it. Reach up, half pura, and start. Hold. Pura counts go up. Apply the locks on the kumba. Release the locks and reach up. Hold. Purak. Reach up. The arms come down. Purak. Recha Pura Recha Rub the palms together, spread the energy of the face, open the eyes. And you may have noticed I said we'll do 10 counts of Bayakumbak, and we did 5. And so my mistake was saying 10. For Plavini, it's a little more difficult to hold your breath, so we do it for less account. And over to Chitra for Asana. So those of you who are sitting on the chair, just follow Kunal. When you can get up, do get up and do the asanas with us, standing. But if you absolutely cannot stand up, make sure you do whatever you can sitting on the floor. So the first one we're going to do is Tadasan. So keep your feet parallel to each other. Your, roll your shoulders back so that your spine straightens out. And then today, instead of just keeping our arms on the side and looking at a spot in front of you, we're going to do that for a few seconds, but we're going to do a variation of Tadasan. So interlock your fingers, turn them the other way, raise your arms up. And now what you're going to try to do is slowly raise your heels up. If you're standing, try this. If you can't stay here, come down again, try again to go on your toes. And if you can't hold your balance here, you can even walk like this backward and forward but just get your feet used to being on the toes. 
So let's try it again. Slowly raise your heels up. Only as much as you are comfortable. If you can take them higher, take them higher. See if you can stay here for a little bit. You're looking at one spot in front of you, so that helps to maintain your balance. And then slowly put your heels down. When you raise your heels like that, bring your arms down. When you raise your heels like that and try to stand on your toes, you are stretching your arches on your feet. So you improve the arches, but you also prevent um, plantar fasciitis, which is the pain that comes in the arch area. So next we are going to do spinal stretches four ways. The spine stretches four ways and we are going to do that. So interlock all fingers except your index finger. Raise your arms up. And I'm just going to move the screen slightly back so you can maybe see my arms. You want to make sure that your elbows are not bent. Take your arms behind your ears and stand here for a bit, looking at one spot in front of you. Now take a deep breath in. And as you breathe out, Pretend you're between two panes of glass and just bend to the left. You don't want to bend forward or backward, just to the side. Don't hold your breath here. Take shallow breaths if necessary. And then slowly come back up. Now once again take a breath in and stretch as high up as possible. And again bend to the right side as if you are between two panes of glass. Stay here for a little bit. Shallow breaths, not holding your breath. And come up again. This time we are going to bend slightly backwards. So breathe in and stretch up. And then bend backwards just a little bit. And come back to the center. And now we're going to bend forward with a straight back from your hip joint. So breathe in and then as you breathe out, start bending forward. Stay halfway here. Take your hands to your thighs and slide them down to your, almost to your ankles. And now push your butt back. By pushing your butt back, you're going to feel a nice stretch from the buttock muscles, the gluteus maximus, all the way down your hamstrings and your calves. The gluteus maximus is the biggest, largest muscle in the body. You want to stretch it and you want to strengthen it as well. Now see if you can put your fingers on the floor. And once you put your fingers on the floor, each time you breathe out, try to bend a little more from your hip joint, not from your waist. And if you have managed to do that, you're going to find that you can put your palms flat on the floor. Now if you cup your heels with your hands, you're going to find that your head naturally goes towards your knees. Stay there for a few seconds. So your chest is on your thighs. Your head is close to your knees. And you're completely bent forward from your hip joint. Release your hands. Put them flat again on the floor if you can. If you can't put them flat, put your fingertips on the floor. Now bring your hands to your hip joints and slowly stand up with a straight back. And now once again stand in Tadasana. So roll your shoulders back, your arms by your side and you're looking at one spot in front of you. Take some deep breaths. 
to rest. This is the resting pose for all standing postures. Next, we are going to do Utkatasan, which is chair pose. So those of you who are using the chair, you, you can try to get off the chair slightly. Okay? And if you can't, that's okay. You can sit and do this. But to really strengthen your thigh muscles, you need to be almost sitting on the chair, but not quite. So first, raise your arms. Keep your fingers together so that there is power in your arms. Then slowly start putting your butt down. Don't bend your knees first. They will bend as you put your butt down. Go as low as you can and you'll find that your weight is in your heels. Your weight should not be in your toes. Go only as low as you can. Stay there for a little bit. Then do a namaste with your elbows out. Take your right elbow outside your left thigh near the knee. Your left elbow is towards the ceiling. And you're looking at the namaste. A slight twist in your waist. Come back to the center. And now put your left elbow outside your right thigh near the knee. Your right elbow is towards the ceiling this time and you're looking at your namaste again. Come back to the center and then you can come up with your arms out or you can take them near your hip joints and help you to come back with a straight back. Stand in Tadasana again. Take a few deep breaths. Next, we are going to do the goddess pose, Devi Asan. So I'm going to move forward because you need to move your feet apart in this. And if you're sitting on the chair, you're just going to move your knees apart. Move your feet comfortably apart. Over here, your feet cannot be parallel. They should be at an angle like that. So, I think you can see my, barely see my feet at an angle like this, like a V. Go as low as you can and hold the Namaste with your elbows out. Normally we tell you to just hold this, but here we have the Goddess, so we're gonna hold them like this. And try to keep your back straight, not lean forward. Keep your back straight and do the arms of the Goddess. Bring the Namaste back. Stay for a few more seconds. You should be feeling some um, compression in your thigh muscles and then slowly come up. When you do that, you're really strengthening your quadriceps. Do the rolling of the shoulders. Stand up straight. Look at one spot in front of you. And next we'll do the balancing posture that we've done many times. I think many of you can do it very well. And if you feel the need to hold on to the chair or to a wall, feel free to do that. There's no problem in doing that. Slowly build up your balance. So, you're going to start putting your weight in your left foot. Raise your right heel just off the floor. See how that feels. Now keep looking at one unmoving spot in front of you. And if you feel that you've got your weight in your left foot, slowly raise your right foot. Place it in the inside, uh, the inner thigh muscle. And if you lose your balance like I just did, no big deal. Just come back and try again. Place your foot as high as possible near your groin. Now if you can't put it near your groin, don't put it near your knee. Put it below the knee near your calf. Do a namaste if you feel that you have your balance. 
then do the branches and then bring your palms together and see if you can stay there for a few seconds and then slowly come out of it stand in tadasan catch your breath start putting your weight in your right foot and remember that you can at any time hold on to the chair for support you're building your balance slowly so there's no shame in holding getting some support raise your left heel stay there for a few seconds if you feel confident your weight is on your right foot then take your left foot up place it as high as possible on the inner right thigh and then do a namaste do the branches put your hands together stay there for a little bit and release that stand in tadasan take some deep breaths next we are going to do marjarasan which is the cat posture so if you are using the chair you are going to use the base the seat of the chair as your floor and those of you who are using the floor make sure that your wrists are right below your shoulders and your knees are right below your hips so you are in a perfect table top position now as you breathe in start raising your tailbone raising your head and lowering your spine don't hold your breath here stay here for a little bit to stretch the spine in the opposite direction and now start breathing out and start raising your spine up and tuck your tailbone in your head down so you get a nice upward arch of the back let's do that once again breathe in raise your tailbone raise your head lower your spine and as you breathe out tuck your tailbone lower your head and raise your spine up as much as you can now flatten your feet behind you and without moving your arms see if you can sit on your heels your arms are going to be nicely stretched it's different for those who are using the chair as the base just watch kunal now move your head from side to side stop in the middle as you come up you curl your toes and you raise your spine up tuck your tailbone your head down and as you breathe in lower your spine raise your tailbone raise your head don't hold your breath here and come back to neutral and sit in any comfortable position if you can sit in vajrasan that's great if not any sitting posture will do catch your breath take some deep breaths and as much as possible throughout the program that we practice try to keep your eyes closed and make it your own practice go within just give yourself that time to develop mentally physically and spiritually now we're going to do an asan called kurmasan i showed it to you a few weeks ago i believe 
but let's do it together. Move your knees. You should be sitting in Vajrasana for this. Move your knees as far apart as possible. So much so that you feel a nice stretch in your adductor muscles, which are your inner thigh muscles. So you're going to move them as far as you can. Comfortably do it. If this is all you can do as far as the mat goes, that's fine. But your aim should be to really stretch them so that you can feel that stretch in the inner thigh muscles. That's something we don't often do. Now what we're going to do is, we're going to sit upright and we're going to cross our hands behind our back so that you feel your, each of your hands is on the scapula, the shoulder blade. Your elbows are towards the ceiling. Make sure that they don't push your head down and you collapse like that. Make sure you can look straight ahead. This is called Kurmasan, which is tortoise pose. These are the four limbs of the tortoise, our elbows and our knees. And the head, of course, is the head of the tortoise. Slowly release that and bring your knees together. And it's 11.28, so it's time almost for us to close. So I'll have Kunal give you the, um, the thought of the day, and then we'll chant two ohms and the prayer. So this uh, thought of the day was sent by Bashir, so thank you very much. It's a very nice one. And it says, there is only one way to avoid criticism. Do nothing, say nothing, and be nothing. There is only one way to avoid criticism. Do nothing, say nothing, and be nothing. The message is that no matter what you do, there's going to be somebody criticizing what you did. And you have to learn to accept that. Okay. So let's sit in Dhyan Mudra, we'll chant two ohms and then say the Shanti part and I'll translate it again for those of you who are not certain about what it means. Recha Purak Namaste for the prayer and we'll start. Asatoma Satgamaya Tamasoma Jyotil Gamaya Mrityuma Amritam Gamaya Om Shanti 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 Rub the palms together spread the energy over your face and the meaning of the prayer is lead me from the unreal to the real lead me from darkness to light lead me from mortality to immortality om may there be peace so thank you all for joining